This is a short video presentation of a convex duality framework for GANS paper by Farzan Farnia and David Shea. GAN addresses the unsupervised learning problem. Here, the goal is to learn a distribution Px from observed samples x1 to xn. Generative adversarial network approaches the unsupervised learning problem through a minimax game between two players, generator G and discriminator D. The minimax problem on this slide is the original GAN problem introduced by Goodfellow et al. in 2014. The question is, what is the interpretation of this minimax problem? In the original GAN paper, it was shown that when D is unconstrained and is trained over the entire space of function, GAN basically minimizes the yes and divergence between the generative model and data distribution. However, GANs in practice are trained over constraint discriminator, and also constraint discriminator results in better generative models. So here we show one example. With four-layer neural network discriminator, we don't get a good performance, while with one Lipschitz convolution of four-layer D, the final generated samples look much better. The question is, what is the interpretation of GAN with constraint discriminator? In this work, we show that GAN in general minimizes divergence between two sets of probability distributions, generative models and discriminator moment matching models. We prove that this interpretation more generally applies to a wide range of GAN formulations, including FGAN, energy-based GAN, Wasserstein GAN, W2 GAN, MMD GAN, and also vanilla GAN. We further discuss the application of our duality framework to vanilla GAN with Lipschitz discriminator. In this case, we show that we are minimizing a hybrid of first-order Wasserstein distance and Jensen Shannon divergence, which is changing continuously with G. This is unlike Jensen Shannon divergence, but similar to Wasserstein distance. And this is desire for training GANs. We perform several numerical experiments to show the benefits of minimizing the hybrid divergence over the Jensen Shannon divergence. So when minimizing Jensen Shannon divergence in vanilla DC GAN without Lipschitz regularization, we see the divergence estimate does not go down properly and also poorly correlates with the quality of samples generated. On the other hand, with vanilla DC GAN with one Lipschitz D, the hybrid divergence decreases nicely as we are training GAN and also nicely correlates with the quality of samples generated. The samples generated by vanilla DC GAN with one Lipschitz D also look much better than the case without Lipschitz regularization, which has actually failed in training over the Elson bedroom dataset. Thank you for your attention. 